All right, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back. Joining us now, syndicated columnist, economist, University of Maryland, former chief economist at USITC, Peter Marisi. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, so let's get right to it. Uh, you and I have both agreed that Donald Trump needs to stop talking about Machado, but, but you know, I'm seeing state polls out today, uh, swing states, and, and all of a sudden now they're tilting a little Hillary. I'm, get, I'm getting a little nervous. I think you should be nervous. Anybody who wants Trump to win should be nervous. He's really not doing what he needs to move the ball down the field. People are kind of exhausted with, with Hillary flaws and Trumpisms and so forth. You know, these women in the swing states, in the suburbs, in places like Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, outside Philadelphia, when I do local news, the composite viewer, I'm told, is a woman that wants solutions. You know, she pays too much for health care. She pays too much for gasoline. She pays too much for this. She thinks her boss is discriminating against women. Like it or not, Hillary's got a policy on everything. It's like the AFL-CIO's got this book. It's got to stand on clean water in Iowa, you know? She's got a policy for everything, and they like that. Now, I don't like her policies, but Trump has to come up with solutions for these women. They say, say what he's going to do. If he starts addressing specific concerns, he can win them over. Well, let me ask you, because you're, you're, there's nobody better to ask than you. Uh, the, the part one of the debate on Monday night was the economy with trade deals, uh, jobs, uh, did he not do extremely well in that segment? He did well from the point of view of pleasing a policy wonk. He didn't do well in terms of pleasing those women. And over and over again, she made, took, took the, the rhetoric and the, and the dialogue back to his credibility. And it, it was great. She's one with credibility problem. We all left it. Donald's the one we should worry about being dishonest. I mean, she, he was outdebated, and that's unfortunate. It is the problem with not preparing. Yeah, well, that, that is the problem, and the question, of course, it raises is what's going to happen? Will he prepare? Now, this town hall forum uh, and setup that we'll see in the next debate uh, a week from Sunday, uh, I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know what the, how exactly it's going to work. I don't know how conducive it's going to be uh, to, um, to them going at each other or they're going to take questions from the audience. I, I just don't know how much he could bring up and get, get across where, as in the first debate, he certainly had opportunity and blew it on every front. Well, she is, she's very good at taking a question and saying what she'd like to say, which is what we're all trained to do in the media. Donald just doesn't want to listen when it comes to that. When he's out on the stump and it's a friendly audience, he's like Barack Obama. He sounds great and they love him. The trouble is, he's not a good debater. He could do better, but he won't take coaching. He, he's not prepared. But it's like so many other things in this campaign. It's the work of an amateur. He could win Ohio. He could be ahead by two or three percentage points in Ohio and still lose the state because he doesn't have a ground game. Yeah. You know, go, go visit his office in Toledo. It's closed. It's locked up. He's got to get people down there, and, and, and he's not doing very basic things. And it's amazing he's winning Ohio to the point where she's given up, but you're right. On the other hand, I think he's got to count on the fact, and I think he is, uh, if he even thinks about this, that there are people out there who are afraid to tell the pollsters they're for him, but they will come out and vote for him, and people who are even for Hillary might just stay home because they're not excited. But anyway, Peter, great to see you. We'll see what, uh, what evolves, and we'll talk next time, sir. Take care. All right, thank you uh, very much, uh, Peter Morisi, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I'll tell you, uh, Peter's exactly right. Uh, Peter's still there. Good. Let him, let him hear me say this. Uh, Donald has got to start listening.